Hey everyone. How's it going? It's a bit of a hike to get to the monastery. So I'm assuming you guys are here either because I've incentivized you to come here. <laughs> 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 yeah. Or you're here just because the previous presentation ended and you didn't want to walk back to all of whatever's going on at the Ecodome. So either way, whatever reason you're here for, thank you for coming and I'm really excited to present to you guys like our design journey of how we've built probably the best options trading UI UX in DeFi, in all of DeFi. Woo. Okay. And, and like we've spent a lot of time and resources into designing this options trading product that makes it really simple and easy for users. So, you know, like for example, what you see right now in DeFi when there are users trying to gain leveraged exposure to an asset like ETH or BTC or Avax, they like to use a lot of these perp products. Now, perpetual perps or perpetual swaps, or some of these are leveraged trading, like leveraged borrowing platforms. Um, all of these are you know, slightly different models, but they allow you to do one main thing, which is with a limited amount of capital, gain exposure to a, a much larger pool of notional exposure, what we call notional. So if token goes up, your profits go up by a lot if you're long. And, and the other way, if you're short and the token goes down a lot. But we at Arrow, and this is, uh, we at Arrow believe that like options are a much superior way to gain leveraged exposure to your favorite underlying asset. And we really want DeFi to understand this. Now, this is not to like shit on any of the perp platforms. Perps are easy to understand, but also very easy to get liquidated. If you go long a position and it goes against you, you get liquidated right after. If you're long and then the token goes down. With options, you can pay a small, premium up front and not have to worry about any liquidations. And in a minute, once this loads, I'll show you how that looks on our UI. So this is our trading UI, and this is our latest version, V2, because uh, we have a version of our product that's live, that's Waltz. I'll, I'll describe it in a little bit at the end. Um, but so if you're on Arrow, this is like our classic signature flow that we've come to perfect after months of iteration. If, if you want to go long a token, and let's say you're really bullish on a Vox. Tonight, you come to the friend's party, you get super lit, and, and then like at 4 a.m. you're back home, you go, you go to your, like, you know, Trader Joe or whatever AMM you want to go to, but none of that will give you nearly as much long exposure as a call option on a Vox. So, so let's, say, let's say you think a Vox will moon in, in a few days. So let's say you think you'll go to, like, $20. Now, now I'm gonna get really drunk tonight, so I think our will go up by a lot. <laughs> so there you go. Um, our recommender recommended a nice little call option here, where if you pay, all you need to do is just pay like two cents, that's it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, the prices may be a little off, but, but maybe, maybe two cents is it. Um, uh, maybe this. Yeah, two, two days bill at expiration. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is right. All right. All right. <laughs> so, so, uh, 
Uh oh, there's some technical difficulty here. <laughs> the graphs are a little messed up. Okay, always the dangers of uh, demoing something on stage. But, <laughs> but if AVAX were to go to like 21.3, you would, your four, okay, so your 14, uh, this was, we were on the May 5th, 21.3. Your two cents would turn into three dollars twenty eight cents on May five. Um, this is of course very unlikely unless we all collectively go back and pump our token <laughs> pump our favorite token <laughs> but um, th uh, so this is like in essence why you'd want to trade options just a small limited upfront premium that you pay now to buy the right, but not the obligation, to purchase a VAX at $18 on May 5. So that's what a call option is. And, and what it does is the right to purchase itself has a value, and that value today is two cents. And, and like you can think about trading this right, this option, as a way to gain leveraged exposure. Or you could wait for these options to settle. So if a VAX settles at 21.3, you're going to get 21.3 minus 18 is the strike price. You will get $3.3, which is what we see here, but 3.28 when you subtract the two cents that you paid up front today. Um, so that was like a quick option, call option 101. I want to go through it for the people who don't understand it. So what are some of the problems with options? There's a lot of technical challenges with options that you can hear a lot more about, like margining and uh, institutional participation. Our co-founders, Ed and Patrick, who are right here, will be speaking about it on a panel on Thursday. Uh, but today, I wanted to show you some of the retail, some of the more degen <laughs> challenges associated with options. Like, look at this shit. What the fuck is this? <laughs> I want, when I look at this, I want to go home and kill myself. <laughs> I don't want to trade options. <laughs> I want to bang my laptop on the ground. But, but, you know, not everyone's as smooth brain as me. We got some of our favorite market makers here in the room, G20, Auros. This is the shit that they live on. This is their bread and butter. <laughs> but for DJs like me and you, this won't cut it out. And, and then, so why I, I speak so passionate about Lee is not just because we're building the best options platform, but it's also because we hate to see users who just want leverage exposure get liquidated. As soon as the token moves down a little bit, your long option gets completely liquidated. And this is why a lot of per platforms have such high revenues, because it's all liquidation premiums. And of course, a lot of other cool token engineering. But so, like, we looked at some of these option UIs and said, this will not work. To, to trade an option here, I need to pick a strike price. I need to pick an expiration. And then I need to pick between these various options. Uh, and so, what we did in our initial design journey, I'm just kind of giving you a quick overview of our Figma that we worked on our designers with. We've been working for a little about a year now where we've deconstructed the option trading platforms of all our competitors, of all our competitors in like TradFi, in, in, in DeFi, in CeFi, and we've kind of taken some of the best out of all of them and done extensive UX research, extensive user testing to come up with, oh, it was options.ai, to come up with a flow that really works for everyone. So th these are some of the interfaces that you'll see in TradFi that we've taken some inspiration from. Uh, just trying to show you, like, guys, their demo. We're, The, the, like all these visual tools, I, I'm not able to pull it up now, but all these visual tools have been really helpful in, in our design process because, and this is something that I've learned from our great designers, like 
you know, you know that slogan like great artists, like I actually don't know how it goes, but <laughs> it ends in like great artists steal. <laughs> but by going across all these other options platforms and doing some user research and testing, we've put like design as our number one priority for our like front end retail users, where we hope to get them to comp understand options, not having to not have to worry about the complexities. And we've done that in so many different ways. Um, by the way, this, none of this would be possible if not for our amazing design team. We have Rui from uh, Flawed and Stanislav, who is working for us as our UX researcher right here. And we spend, <laughs> we, we spend every day analyzing like what user, like how users will think on our platform. We know we're delivering a very complex platform, so we try to make sure every piece, every detail is thought about. Um, and so I'll kind of show you our landing page that actually shows you a little bit about how our AMM model is going to work in the future. We have an option warp product that's live right now, and you can go there right now if you have a bunch of uh, if you have a bunch of ETH wrapped ETH sitting on of, on Avalanche, you can go and earn some yield on it. And unlike Ribbon and other people, we try to make it very fair and very honest way of understanding what kind of yield profile your option what will have. So you, you got to take a look at that. Look at that. But our goal is using a two pool liquidity structure market make, and price options across strikes and expirations. And we do this using an SVI model that runs off chain that takes, price, that takes prices from Deribit and gets an implied wall curve that we use to price options on our platform. And the liquidity pool acts like the liquidity providers to our market maker to our market making on the MM, but also acts like an insurance pool for which the liquidity pool providers get access to the premiums, the profits, and the payoffs from our platform. And I love this animation because no matter how many words I can explain it in, I'm not as uh, articulate as my co-founders here. <laughs> uh, these pictures do a much better job of explaining what's going on. So with that, I'll actually go to our vault product that's currently live and give you a little, uh oh. <laughs> oh, it's vault.alex, yeah. Oh no. Oh yeah, thank you. Sorry guys, some issue with my MetaMask. But you can go right now and actually purchase these call options on our call option spreads on our vault right now. And this is a subset of the full AMM that I was presenting to you a few minutes ago. So you can go to our vault, and if you have some ETH to deposit, and you truly believe that ETH will stay below like $2,111, you can earn a lot of premium on your wrapped ETH on AVAX by depositing those tokens. And what we do is we actually sell a call option spread against, these, against your deposit. And what makes us unique is that we sell call debit spreads, which allow you to lever up and get more premium, more yield out of your avalanche, uh, out of your ETH, wrapped ETH on avalanche, at the risk of, <laughs> at the risk of like more like a higher liquidation if the position were to go against you. But it's very clear to understand if you truly believe that your, uh, if ETH will stay below a certain price, 
by this expiration date, uh, you can check out our Vault product and play around with it. Um, and you can message us on Twitter to get off the whitelist. Yeah. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to end on showing you our contest and how fun options can be. So we, ha we ran a trading contest uh, so late, late last year, and we had real cash prizes, and we were testing out a very early version of our AMM. And we wanted to get feedback on our UX and UI, and also understand like, like player psychology and mentalities, and uh, like trader psychology, and how to cater to these users. So everyone started with 100K in testnet of AX, and <laughs> Our number one player in, it was, I think it was like a three week competition, turned $100,000 into $1.9 billion. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, there was, a, there was a delay in our price feeds that, <laughs> where we were getting prices from, uh, we were getting prices from, I think, uh, CoinGecko. And that's not a good price feed to, if you're gonna use it for our pricing. But it was like a very early version. We weren't going to launch with that. Um, but when we had the CoinGecko price feed, the prices were delayed by one to 10 minutes because it's an aggregated price feed and it waits for all the market, all the market partners before its prices are updated. Nevertheless, this guy traded BTC options by looking at uh, BTC prices on like his favorite centralized exchange and traded repeatedly against our AMM um, and turned his $100,000 into 1.9 billion. Uh, <laughs> and before, you know, as soon as we figured out like what was going on, uh, that was like a part of the system that was not production ready, but we didn't realize that it, it would be taken advantage of. Uh, we fixed it. And unfortunately, it went from 1.97 billion to 1.92 billion. So I'm always upset because we should have waited like a few more days so we could let Abul Ali get to two billion dollars. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's a that's a little journey of like designing the best options UI and and also like how we aim to compete with our trading competitions with our vault products. If you guys have any questions, you can like ask me. Yeah, hey. Yeah, so it's an AMM model, and the way it works is Sorry. there's a custom oracle that is currently off-chain because we run heavy statistical computations. Uh, all these computations that cannot really be done on-chain on EVM. So what we do is we have an off-chain pri uh, pricing and hedging engine that uses a, a, that uses a volatility curve that's been backed out from the quotes on Deribit and other centralized exchanges, uses that to price options on our AMM, but has adjustments to, uh, to account for any like demand effects on, like, on, the, on the risks that are created by options positions on our book. Um, or also the other side, if there's not much demand, like uh, the, the bid ask spreads like kind of get cheaper so that we can encourage more options to be traded on that side of the curve and actually bring the delta back in line. And that's one of, the ma that's one of our major challenges that we solve at Arrow, is we delta hedge the book of option liabilities that are created uh, so that our liquidity providers are protected against getting wrecked. <laughs> yeah. uh, he was first out. Yeah. Where can we see your locked liquidity? Lock liquidity. What liquidity you have available? Like where do we see that? Right now? Yeah, I think that's somewhere on the vault. Uh, I'll have to see. It's very small right now because it's only white listed. And but we got our like first set of 20 users like a week ago. So, but yeah, uh, we're gonna put up all those stats. We wanna make it very clear about how the vaults work and who's, where are the payoffs coming from, but yeah. So for the call options uh, on, on expiry, if you're in profit, 
Do you have to exercise the, the to? The, Our like, options are cash settled, so it'll all be in USDC. But do you have to pay more capital first, buy, it, and then sell uh, it? No, no, it'll, you'll just be, uh, you'll just be like given the payoff. Okay. Yeah. And for a vault, it works a little different. That's a little more industry DeFi native, DeFi option vault strat uh, standard, which is you deposit the underlayer in your vault. And we sell like up to six and a half call spreads per token that you deposit. And, and with that, we, uh, we like sell options. You can go and buy options right now against the vault depositors that who deposited a few days ago. And so you will be paying a premium in USDC. Let's say I was the vault participant. I'll be depositing ETH, wrapped ETH. And at expiry, we actually liquidate just a small portion of your wrapped teeth to fund the payoffs. Cool. Uh, yeah, before I run out of time, just meet me outside for t-shirts. I may have a few more VIP Trader Joe friends party tickets. No promises, we may have sold out. Uh, but I'll, I'll have them. And we're giving out like a scratch card. So please be sure to collect a scratch card that shows you the magic of options. And we're running a live trading competition. It's more like a lucky draw, but a trading competition with your cards. Hey. Hey, uh, which pairs are you launching? We currently have vaults on wrapped ETH, but we are definitely going to support BTC options, hopefully on BTCB, yeah. and on a Vox. And as soon as we're able to have a custom wall curve for a Vox, we're eager to launch options on Avalanche. Uh, Avalanche is probably like top five options market, like Deribit was going to support Avalanche after Solana. Um, they had supported Solana, but they, they shut it down, but they're gonna bring back Solana and Av uh, Avox pretty soon. Hey. Can you say that again? Absolutely. So we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As I initially said, <laughs> there's a lot of people who really prefer the option chain. And uh, we have that live as well, but the, we definitely want to make it a lot more powerful. And we also want to pre-package any long wall, short wall strategies into like nicely packaged like bundle orders. So, it makes, we, so we make it easier for users to trade their um, wall strategies. Yeah. No more questions. We, and we ended right on the dot. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah.